Hi, it's Dwyer. It's March the 17th, 2020. Keeping it free.blogspot.com, a financial blog. It's free. Uh, gamblersadvisory.com, a sports betting blog that I run that is also free. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, this morning, I was on Highway 85 in the Bay Area, going from San Jose to Mountain View. I make that trip often enough. I have an office in Mountain View. This morning, there were hardly any cars on the road, right? It's been like this for a few days. The Bay Area economy, right, strategically, a very important part of the country, a very high-tech area, a lot of innovation, right, has pretty much been shut down by our response to the coronavirus. Now, what I want people to do is to just take a step back and look at the numbers. Then let's ask a few questions Then I'm going to end this video, in part because I don't want to be accused of spreading fake news. But with an understanding that pneumonia, as of March the 9th, 2020, and I have the numbers on my keepingitfree.blogspot.com site, you'll notice a graph of numbers uh, from the Center for Disease Control. Pneumonia on a daily basis kills, as of March the 9th, 2,216 people a day, globally, right? Um, hepatitis B kills 2,430 people a day, globally. Whooping cough, 440 people a day, globally. As of March 9th, the coronavirus officially had killed 56 people a day, right? 56. Now, let me just point out that coronaviruses have been around for a long time. In the description of this video, I'm going to post a link to an interview that's here on YouTube with Dr. Wolfgang Wolfdarg, right? Excuse me, Dr. Wolfgang Wolfdarg, where he discusses the fact that coronaviruses have been with us for a long time. Of all the viruses out there, coronaviruses account for about 10% of the viruses, so you would expect at any moment in time, 10% of sick people in a nursing home to have coronaviruses, right? In his talk, he further points out that the death rate of coronaviruses, and this strain is a new strain, right? Uh, hasn't been proven to be extraordinary compared to seasonal flu, which kills 1,027 people a day, right, as of March the 9th. I know the numbers have changed a little bit. I encourage you to look at the fatalities in the last week or so, right? But understand... In any given year, because humans' bodies build up immunity to viruses, viruses mutate. This is all explained in the Dr. Wodarg's video with the link I'm leaving in the description section to this video. Right? Viruses always mutate. You always get new strains of viruses because humans develop immunities to viruses. So what happens is to stay viable, the virus will then change in form over time, 
right? So that it can overcome the immunity of human beings. So, let's just speculate for a little bit. I know we're in shutdown. I know the airlines are in free fall financially. Las Vegas casinos now uh, want bailouts. I understand Marriott has had to furlough hundreds of employees. Um, one of President Bush's henchmen, excuse me, President Trump's henchmen, uh, Robert Mnuchin, is saying that if the government doesn't bail out a lot of industries, we might end up with 20% unemployment. Right? This is big news. So let's ask a few hard questions because I think we should be skeptical of official narratives, of government stories. Especially when the narrative is not even our narrative. It's the narrative of a different government, isn't it? Let's say you're China. Let's say that investment gurus like Kyle Bass of Heyman Capital here in the United States in Dallas have looked at the numbers and have been absolutely astonished by your level of debt. Let's say that the United States is involved in a trade war with you. That's not helping the economy. Right? Let's say that China already, hypothetically, consumes 50% of all copper. Let's say that they're building over the last, oh, 30 years or so is close to unprecedented in the annals of world history. Right, by the way, on keepingitfree.blogspot.com, I have a video from Steve Sugarroot of Stansberry Research where he actually shows you certain skylines of Chinese cities from 20 years ago and shows you the huge metropolitan areas they are today. You've had unprecedented building. You've had unprecedented debt. Let's say you're the president of China and you realize that you need some kind of distraction to take people's eyes off of the huge debt, the economic uncertainty, the overvaluation of stocks globally. Right, the demographic problem caused by a one-child policy, which China used to have. So along comes the coronavirus. Right, it's new. Now again, this is just asking questions. I'm not making statements. We're just asking questions. A coronavirus comes along. Right? Keep in mind, by the time May 9th, excuse me, March 9th, uh, the date for my numbers from the Center of Disease Control, by the time this number of 56 deaths per day was calculated, the coronavirus was already in remission in China. It had already died down. So here you have a virus that kills on average per day as of March the 9th. Let's say one nineteenth of the people worldwide of the seasonal flu. Right? Less than one twentieth per day of the deaths worldwide caused by HIV. So, of course, keep in mind what happened. China, a surveillance state. They have facial recognition cameras at train stations in China. Right? China goes in a lockdown. Right? You can imagine they were able to increase their surveillance capabilities. Right? The official narrative was that they were fighting 
some killer disease that was highly contagious, but that just happened to have a death rate far lower than tuberculosis, hepatitis B, pneumonia, HIV, malaria. By the way, malaria kills more than 2,000 people a day. Right? Think about how ridiculous it would be. Let's think about the flu or the common cold. Think about how ridiculous it would be to say Idris Elba has caught the common cold. Right? Kevin Durant has caught the common cold or the flu. Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson have caught the flu. Right? Your assumption would be that guess what? The flu's been around. We know it's contagious. Right? Not only that, understand, before this Wuhan coronavirus, coronaviruses were around. This isn't the first coronavirus in history. Coronaviruses had been mutating. But yet life went on. Right? Understand the prevalence of coronaviruses, research it, is such that before this pandemic, epidemic scare, coronaviruses were around, and if you went into a nursing home, of the people who were sick, 5 to 10% would have coronaviruses. Right? Think about it. So, we're in an era, and this predates this Wuhan coronavirus. We're in an era where the financial situation of several countries is so bad that you have negative yielding sovereign debt. Right? You have negative yielding bonds. Here in the United States, before all this broke, Understand the interest rate on the 30-year was below 3%. Right? Think about that. So, China goes into lockdown mode on a virus that has a mortality rate that hasn't been proven. Right? To be higher than historical coronaviruses. Think about it. Right? China, of course, is able to, you know, do a lot of investigation, take the body temperature of a lot of people. There are videos here on YouTube of them literally carrying people to get tested. Right? Of using their surveillance equipment, and that's a country with a social credit system, to investigate the health of their citizens. We're hearing about people dying of this coronavirus. But yet we're not hearing about the people who, the far greater number, who have died during the same time period from tuberculosis, hepatitis B, pneumonia, AIDS, malaria, rotavirus, seasonal flu, whooping cough, typhoid fever. Right? No, we've singled out this disease. And so here's a shock. Right? People are actually recovering from the disease. Right? People have been encouraged to self-quarantine. And in the self-quarantine, right, they've been able to bounce back. Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson have announced that, hey, guess what? We were able to bounce back from this disease. Right, think about it. So now, the rest of the world, after China's reaction, the rest of the world has had to convince their electorate that they're taking the steps necessary to protect them. Right, world leaders don't want to look like they're the country that's going to allow their population to get sick from a coronavirus, even though last year 
many people in practically every country got sick from different coronaviruses. Even though last year we knew that seasonal flu has a mortality rate, but yet we did nothing to require self-quarantines and things like that. So think about what's happened here. And again, we're just speculating. The United States of America is gonna suffer a huge hit to its GDP. You know that because you haven't been able to go to your favorite restaurant. Here in the Bay Area, I can tell you the restaurants aren't even allowed to operate. How are bartenders who depend on tips, how are waitresses and waiters who depend on tips, how are cooks who depend on their paycheck, how's the entrepreneur who owns the restaurant who's likely carrying a debt load, right? Restaurants cost money. Restaurants have mortgages. Many of these entrepreneurs have commercial leases. How are they gonna pay their debts? So I do wonder exactly what's going on because we've reached the point where, you know, we're hearing, oh, Rudy Gobert, the Utah basketball player has the coronavirus. Donovan Mitchell has the coronavirus. Right? Is that really that different than hearing that they have the flu? When you hear that people with compromised respiratory systems, someone who's had emphysema, or someone who is in their mid-60s and older might be at increased risk to this virus. Isn't that what you would expect from tuberculosis, hepatitis B, pneumonia, HIV, rotavirus, seasonal flu, norovirus, whooping cough? Isn't that what you'd expect? So now, we're left with a situation where, let's face it, governments now, in an era of negatively yielding sovereign debt in many locations, governments now have a nice political excuse to give huge bailouts, to increase surveillance of their subjects of the electorate. Right? I, I wonder whether we're better off with people losing their jobs and getting quarantined for a coronavirus, a type of virus that has existed in the past that has a mortality rate less than many illnesses that we don't quarantine for. Right? Seasonal flu, folks, we've had that for years. It, more people have died from seasonal flu since we became aware of this Wuhan coronavirus than from the Wuhan coronavirus. Right? Think about it. So we've weakened ourselves economically, right? We've focused on people who, God forbid, have been infected by a virus. And we use that as proof that all of us are in grave danger from a virus we didn't know existed a few months ago that hasn't been proven to kill as many people per day worldwide as the seasonal flu. Right? It, it's simply astonishing. 
simply astonishing. In a world where we've had public diversions in the past, right? The Reichstag fire in Germany, for example. Adolf Hitler, look that up, right? Where people believe now that the Nazi party burned down the Reichstag. Right? In a world where we've had diversions, where we've had regimes that want to stay in power, where we've had a push to use modern technology, cell phone tracking, uh, facial recognition, to more closely monitor voters. Right? Suddenly, here's this virus that we didn't know existed before. It's supposed to be new. Right? But it's a coronavirus, and coronaviruses have existed in the past. And, of course, huge lockdown in China, I believe less than 10,000 people dead. Do we know how many people died in China during that same period of time? from the seasonal flu, right? Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson, I have no doubt that they were inconvenienced by, you know, a virus infection, flu, a uh, cold, right? We've all been there. But wow, is that a reason to topple an economy, right? Many countries right now are hanging by a thread. We've seen the Dow Jones drop several thousand points on several days. We're bracing ourselves for terrible GDP numbers because we see our neighbors staying home. We ourselves are staying home. We understand not everyone can work from home. People are losing their jobs. People are getting furloughed for a virus that as of March the 9th had killed 56 people a day in a world where, as of March 9th, seasonal flu had killed 1,027 people a day. HIV had killed 2,110 people a day. Hepatitis B had killed 2,430 people a day. Tuberculosis had killed 3,014 people a day. And we haven't sought to keep people at home to use social distancing for any of those other diseases. Right, so let's keep track of what's going on, I believe, in time as we realize that many of the people we're now hearing have contracted the coronavirus, right? Idris Alba, the Hankses, uh, Rudy Gobert, um, we're going to see them recover. We're going to find out that tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people were able to recover. Kids don't even know they have the disease many times. Right? I believe in a few months we're going to look back and we're going to question everything as we should. Was China's reaction an over? reaction? Was it inadvertent? Was it a panic? Or was it something that might not have been a panic? That might have had a political element to it? Right? Did the other world leaders, knowing that their voters had panicked because of China's reaction, did the other world leaders conclude that there really was a big health risk? Or were they giving in to the political winds? So Elon Musk wanted to continue work at the Tesla Gigafactory in Fremont. Q 
Kid Rock doesn't want to close his bar in Nashville. Understand, right now, kids are out every day at beaches in places like Florida enjoying spring break. Right by kids, I mean college age kids, right? I'm guessing most of them are going to be alive in a month. I'm guessing many of them will not have even caught any symptoms of a virus. I'm guessing for many of the people out on a beach, hanging out, enjoying their spring break, I'm guessing it's going to feel like it felt last year when coronaviruses existed and when coronaviruses were about 10% of the viruses out there and when, of course, viruses were mutating to try to overcome the resistance built up by humans and other animal subjects. Let's keep an eye on this. I'm not sure if what we're hearing is accurate, but just understand what is going to be real. The hit to GDP. The hit to the airline business. The hit to the casino business. The hit to the hotel business. The hit to the restaurant business. I just wonder whether all of this is even necessary. Again, in the description section, I've left a link to a video by Dr. Wolfgang Wogdark. Right? I encourage everyone to watch it. Thanks for giving me 27 minutes of your time. I appreciate you stopping by.